Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games and part 11 of our How to Play Warcry series. I'm Lee and in this video we'll be going through terrain. Before we begin our battles, there's just one more set of rules that we need to go through and that is the terrain. This video will cover the core rules for the terrain and we'll go through all the terrain pieces for the above ground battles. We'll be covering all the special rules for the Warcry Catacombs dungeon terrain in parts 12, 13 and 14. During any battle, there will be one or more terrain features on the battlefield as dictated by the terrain card in play. Fighters can interact with terrain features in numerous ways when making move actions. We covered these move actions in part 8 of our How to Play Warcry series. Now we'll introduce the other interactions that fighters can have with terrain features and we'll also describe the unique type of terrain features that are used in Warcry. Terrain features come in many shapes and sizes. When a rule refers to a terrain feature, it refers to the scenery model itself and any base it is mounted upon, but not any empty space around it or within it. Some terrain features or some parts of terrain features can be defined as an obstacle. An obstacle is any part of a terrain feature that prevents a fighter from moving horizontally and that extends vertically more than one inch high from the battlefield floor or the platform upon which it is placed. Some terrain features and obstacles can give our fighters cover. The target fighter of an attack action receives the benefit of cover if an imaginary line drawn between the closest points of each fighter's base passes through an obstacle. However, if the fighters are more than one inch away from each other, do not count parts of obstacles within half inch of the fighter making the attack action. This represents fighters that have weapons with a longer range being able to aim around corners, through gaps in nearby terrain and so on. It's important to note here that this cover rule applies to an obstacle and not to low terrain. For example, we would draw the imaginary line between the closest points on each fighter's base that pass through this obstacle. But we would not do this for this piece of low terrain. If a fighter receives the benefit of cover when targeted by an attack action, add one to their toughness characteristic for that attack action. Our next terrain feature is called a platform. Some terrain features or some parts of a terrain feature can be defined as a platform. A platform is a horizontally flat surface on a terrain feature with a surface area larger than one inch by one inch. It also has to be raised one inch or higher above the battlefield floor. When an attack action targets an enemy fighter that is on a platform, the target fighter of that attack action receives the benefit of cover if the fighter making the attack action is three inches or more vertically below the target fighter. Sometimes fighters can fall off terrain. 
When an attack action targets an enemy fighter that is within half inch of the edge of a platform that is open, for example, an edge that is not enclosed by an obstacle such as a wall, and scores any critical hits, the target fighter of that attack must take a falling test after the attack action has been resolved. To do so, the player controlling that fighter rolls a dice. On a one, the fighter is said to have fallen. And we covered the rules on falling in a previous video. This rule does not affect fighters with the fly rune mark. Our next terrain feature is called Deadly Terrain. Some terrain features or parts of terrain features are said to be Deadly Terrain. All these terrain features here that were included in the Warcry Catacombs box are classed as Deadly Terrain. If you choose to use other terrain features, perhaps you've made them yourself or using them from another game system, you can agree with your opponent which parts of those terrain features are deadly terrain when the battlefield is first set up. Parts of terrain features that are deadly terrain can still be platforms or obstacles if they fall under the definitions of either. If a fighter ever moves onto deadly terrain, for example, if they begin to climb deadly terrain or finish a jump upon deadly terrain, then they immediately suffer impact damage. Again, we covered this impact damage in a previous video. In addition, if a fallen fighter is placed within one inch of deadly terrain, they immediately suffer impact damage. It's important to note that it is possible for a fighter to suffer impact damage more than once due to deadly terrain. For example, if a fallen fighter is placed within one inch of deadly terrain and is now three inches or more vertically lower than their location before they fell, that fighter would suffer impact damage twice. They would therefore need to make two dice rolls. Now we move on to stairs and ladders. Some terrain features or parts of terrain features are said to be stairs or ladders. Fighters that finish their activation climbing stairs or a ladder are not said to have fallen and can remain partway up the stairs or partway up the ladder. If it is not possible to physically place the fighter in their current location on the ladder or the stairs, then just make a note of where they are. When an attack action targets an enemy fighter that has ended their activation climbing stairs or climbing a ladder and scores any critical hits, the target fighter must take a falling test after the attack action has been resolved. Our next terrain feature are the archways and doors. Some terrain features or part of terrain features are said to be archways or doors. In the Warcry terrain, this is classed as a door and this is classed as an archway. As with our deadly terrain, if you're using other terrain features, you can agree with your opponent which parts of those terrain features are either archways or doors when the battlefield is first set up. 
archways and doors can still be platforms or obstacles if they fall under the definitions of either. Usually, they will be obstacles, but something like a trapdoor could be part of a platform. As part of a move action, if a fighter is touching a part of a terrain feature that is defined as an archway or a door, that fighter can make a normal move through it even if the miniature or its base is too large to physically fit through, or if it is blocked completely, as in the case of a closed door. This is an exception to the rule which states that a fighter cannot move through any part of a terrain feature. To move through an archway or door, first measure the distance in a straight line through the horizontal centre of the archway or door. If the fighter has sufficient movement to pass through the archway or door and be placed on the other side, they can move through it. When fighters move through archways and doors, all other movement rules must still be followed. For example, they cannot move through another fighter. There are a few restrictions with archways and doors. For example, fighters with any of the following room marks cannot move through archways. These are gargantuan and mount. Also, fighters with the following rune marks cannot move through doors. These are again gargantuan, mount and also beast. This now takes care of all the core rules we need to play a Battle of Warcry using the above ground terrain. Before we finish this video, I just want to address a point with the actual terrain that's included in the Warcry Catacomb set against some of the terrain that's featured in the core book. You'll notice in the battle plan generator of the core book that some of the terrain isn't featured in the Warcry Catacomb set. Here's an example where there's four pieces of terrain and we only have two. In the Catacombs book, we get given some cards for the above ground terrain that we can use that makes use of all the terrain pieces that are included in the box set. And it allows us to mix some of the dungeon terrain pieces with the above ground terrain pieces. If we want to use the terrain layouts from the core book, then we'll have to either improvise with terrain we have from other sets, pick up some duplicate sprues for the Warcry Catacombs terrain, or we can use our own terrain layouts and make use of every piece we get in the Warcry Catacombs box in a way that we think looks good and will allow us to play a fun battle. So while this does limit us slightly in what we can use from the core book, it certainly doesn't impact the game in any negative way. If you want to delve down into the dungeons, then come and join me for part 12 of our How to Play Warcry series, where we'll go through dungeon battles. I hope you found this video helpful. Please join in and comment below with any thoughts or additions you'd like to make. It'd be great to hear from you. The next video in the series will play right after this one in the playlist. And I'll also put links in the description below to every video in the series. Thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more Warcry content like this, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. <laughs>